KFC 19, I thought was a, um, a night of some really unbelievable fights, some memorable knockouts. Um, headlined by women again, like I said, uh, three of the top four fights were, were contested by women tonight. So, you know, it was a, it was a big step in, in a great direction for BKFC, showing that we, um, you know, we can do a lot of different, <clears throat> a lot of different things here in this sport and in this company. And, um, you know, it's growing. It's, uh, the fan base is, is phenomenal. We tried some new things tonight, um, had, had some good feedback on that. Um, we're not going to be doing that again right now, though. We're sticking to bare knuckle. We did learn tonight that you do need to take the gloves off because that's what this is all about, bare knuckle fighting. Um, first, we're going to start with uh, um, a girl who, you know, ha she was one half of fighter tonight for Knuckle Mania back in February. Then she came in here tonight, and I think they wound her up, and she just kept going. She started really slow, but, you know, she's going to apologize for that. Uh, Taylor Starling. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? <laughs> Taylor, um, how do you feel about tonight's fight? It was awesome. Um, the reason I started so quick was I felt like I set the bar really high with my last performance, and I knew that I had to top that. I knew that I there was no room to go in there and start slow. <laughs> so I just wanted to top that and show everybody that, that my last fight wasn't just a one-time thing. Um, absolutely. Uh, also, you know, you started very, very fast. Last time you had a war, I think, you know, you just came in a lot more, um, I think a lot more prepared for bare knuckle. You know, this is your second time around. A lot of people in their first time don't really know what to expect. And it just is sensational. Um, the women's 125 pound division is heating up here. And I know you have some friends here that you might not want to fight, but I think, you know, we might have just uh, brewed into something tonight. Um, so who would you like to fight next? Um, I don't have any particular, whoever you tell me to fight is who I'm going to fight. I don't have any particular call, but I see you looking over there at Britain. Um, I'm not calling anybody out, but at the end of the day, it's all business. I love Britain no matter what. doesn't change how I feel about her, and I respect everybody, so whoever I fight next is whoever I fight next. Well, we are going to um, start forming the 125-pound tournament for the women's because you women deserve to have a championship belt, and we're going to do that. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Starling. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming out. And then we're going to, after after we talk to these people, then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, Britton, um, you know, you came in here as the as the co um, feature bout of the evening. You thought you should have been the main event, um, you know, and maybe you deserved it. You showed tonight that you definitely are, uh, you know, yeah, you're something special with Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Um, are you are you listening? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I was above, like, um, maybe I would have been more. Listen. So, so you started you started a little slow, and you know I think you were kind of feeling out Jenny Savage. She had an awkward style grabbing the back of your head, but I mean you just planted your feet and you went on a body attack and then a head attack like I've never seen before. So congratulations on that. But let's talk about your fight tonight. Y'all hear that? Dave just gave me a compliment. <laughs> Last time it was, Britain Hart isn't the most technical fighter, but whatever. She's here. Well, you're not the most technical fighter. <laughs> but I am the but real bare knuckle fighter. You're a bad ass. So um, what do you think about your fight tonight? I'm sorry, what? What do you think about your fight tonight? Well, you know, I do want to apologize, actually, because... Um, Unlike Taylor, I really do. I was really setting the standard to get a quick knockout. I really, really wanted that, so I think I was a little disappointed at the first round, so kind of didn't go um, as I planned, but I'm working on that, so that will just be something to improve on next time. So I'm excited. I feel like I've leveled up, and, you know, my last, um, you know, with the best bare knuckle fight I had was a TKO in the fourth round, so this one was third round, so, you know, hey, there's improvement there. Super proud for that. You know, we squashed our beef. Everyone can see that. So, what do you yeah. want to do next? Well, you know, I, I think that in fighting. I, I, am, I deserve a title shot. So, if it's not a title on it, you know, what the hell am I here for? So, um, you know, we're definitely going to be forming that 125 pound tournament to get you where you need to be. You know, but look, I you fought on this card. You looked, for it. you looked very, very good. 
Taylor looked very, very good. You know, that's a fight I think the fans might really want to see. What do you ladies think about that? Put a title on it. The belt, the, put the title. I'm not fighting Taylor unless it's for the belt. Put the title on it. And um, okay. <laughs> no, um, you did great. Good job. Here, Mick. You guys. So we had the uh, co-main event of the evening, uh, Mick Terrell versus Arnold Adams. I told everybody that you're probably going to see a new Arnold Adams. You know, we had a talk, and he knows what Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is looking for, and he came out and delivered. I mean, you know, he, uh, he fought a tough, tough, undefeated Brit who came over here and wanted to fight. I, I'm not going to make excuses for Mick, but, you know, he had a 14-day quarantine in Mexico. Um, it, it got pushed back an extra day, so he just arrived here yesterday. So, you know, um, he didn't have an easy road here. He came out. He fought hard, and, you know, Arnold Adams just sh showed that he was a better man tonight. So, Mick, uh, what do you think about the fight tonight, and what was your experience like with, with, with Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship? Uh, my experience with Bare Knuckle Championship is great. Um, Arnold delivered on everything I thought he would. He's slick, and he's good, and he moves well. But what he does do well is punch hard. I, I wasn't expecting him to punch as hard as he does. But uh, he's very slick, and punches hard. He, he's very good. Um. What do you think a little bit more about the differences with, with the UK bare knuckle boxing scene and then coming over here in America with the different rule set? Um, I don't think the rules set changed that much for me. It's, it's just bigger. It's just bigger, better, better production, maybe. Everything's just bigger and better. Thank you. Um, then we go over here to the former champ and could be challenging for the championship pretty, pretty soon. Arnold Adams, you know, he came in. Um, he said he was going to be a different guy. He showed tonight that he was a different guy. So what do you think about the fight tonight, Arnold? Uh, I want to shout out to Mick for accepting the fight and coming over. Um, he was faster than what I anticipated. And it did, I didn't show it in the fight, but he rocked me three times. And if you guys watch the fight, you'll see my knees buckle. And that's when I wrapped up. I wrapped him up. Um, but I don't. I got a thing with it. I say don't show it. And if you're hurt or you're rocked, you can't show any sign because your opponent will pick up on it. Every time we tied up and I hit him, he'd wince or he, mm, I'm going to feed on that because I, now I know what I'm doing is working. The same thing when I fought Bell Train when we tied up. I land those punches and he, I, I'd hear him grimace and I could, I could tell what I was doing was working. So I'm going to keep feeding on that. Uh, he did his thing tonight, though. His, he was, like I said, he was faster than what I anticipated, and he landed some good shots. I never saw that right hand, and it was the right hand three times that rocked me. No, absolutely. I mean, he he did he did catch you with a really nice right hand, buckled your knees, mm -hmm. and I said, "Damn, he's he's hurt pretty good." You showed great, great composure. Didn't really let anybody know that you were that hurt, and you know, you came back and scored a sensational win tonight. And he made my nose bleed. <laughs> I've had five fights and never had blood drawn and, and, and tip, hey, hey. I've never, I've never bled bare knuckle until tonight and I gotta what, take my hat off to him. What's next, Arnold? What do you want next? <sighs> I think y'all know what I want next. I want, I want, I want Joey Hart next. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, I want, I want Joey Beltran next for that belt. I need those belts back in Chicago. Hey, you're not going to get it, though. My man's never given up that belt. So. I mean, hey, I know I got it. Support your man. Support your hubby. But, All right, uh, so that's enough of that. <laughs> um, can you hand that down to Rachel? Rachel Ostevich fought the main event tonight. Hey, hey, hey. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys were watching the lines, but she opened up at about a uh, one and a half to uh, one underdog. She closed or she was earlier this afternoon, she was minus, I mean, she was plus 1,100. She was that kind of underdog coming into tonight. She came in, um, she said that, you know, she said that she, she was both different in Hawaii. She came in and showed that, um, you know, let me rewind for a second. We talked, I talked to Brian Butler, her manager, who I have a great relationship with, and we talked about getting Rachel a fight, and she didn't really want to fight Bare Knuckle. And then when Paige was brought up, she said, I'm all in, I want to fight Paige. So she accepted the fight. She looked sensational tonight. We asked her in the post-fight interview, do you want to fight Bare Knuckle again? And she said, I think so. So let's talk to, uh, let's talk to Rachel. Uh, Rachel, 
first of all, you came in here. It was a new sport for you, something that, you know, you've never competed on before. It was a rematch with Paige Van Zandt, but not in the same sport, so I didn't really count it as a rematch. You looked very, very good. You took some good shots and just kept, kept coming forward. What, what, what are your thoughts on the fight tonight? Man, it's been a long time coming. Thank you guys for coming out and supporting, not giving up on me. I came out, showed out, came what I, I came to do what I came to do, and I was win. I didn't expect anything else, anything less. I was coming home as a winner. She looks like um, she caught you with some. She caught you with some really nice jabs um, as you were hitting. Uh, you were landing her, landing the overhand right on her really at will, and then you got in tight and unloaded punches on her. You looked really, really good. Um, what was it like competing in bare knuckle for the first time and, and tasting bare knuckle punches? Bare knuckle, totally different sport. Honestly, when you get in there, it's fun. <laughs> I was having fun. I was talking. I was about it. I was down. It was great. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm just going to open it up to the press because, uh, you know, I know you guys have a lot of questions, so let's open it up. First, we'll open up questions for um, for Taylor Starling. Questions for Taylor Starling. Yo, guys. I agree with what Britton said. If it's for a belt, you know, it's, I have. Hey, guys, I quiet love, down a little bit, guys. I've, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I love Britton Hart. Um, like I said, it's all business, but we want some damn money, and we want a damn belt if we're going to fight. <laughs> Chris. How you doing? It's Chris from k Type for Christopher James. First of all, uh, all you folks up there did a great job again. Dave, you put together a great card for tonight here in Tampa Bay. Um, Rachel, like you know, you, you were saying about, you know, you came here to do a job. You got out here. You did the job. So, and you, you were so cute in post fight. I think so. Is this definitely going to be something we're going to see you come back and hit again? Um, it's definitely up to my manager. You know, I can say, yeah, all I want up here. But when it comes down to it, it's got to be on the paper. And I'm sure they'll have a good talk after this. All right, and uh, Taylor, uh, and this is for Taylor and Britton. You know, Dave alluded to it. He tried to get you guys to agree to it. Um, but I think he's right. I think this is the fight we all want to see. So Taylor and Britton, how, how down are you guys to do this fight? Like I just said, we need money and we need a belt. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him. You better tell, tell him. Get him a belt, baby. Fight for the gold. Any other questions for Taylor? All right, let's um, let's open it up to um, Mick Terrell. Any questions for Mick Terrell? You earned that, tell him. You fucking earned that shit. Mick. Mick. You know, Mick, you came in um, again. The quarantine and everything. 14 days, an extra day. Um, how much do you think this affected your performance tonight? And when you come back again, are we going to see a different Mick Terrell? I um, don't make excuses. Um, quarantine's a quarantine. It's I would have trained exactly the same as I did back home. I had good gym facilities. Um, when I come back, I'll just have to try and get better head movement. Uh, Britton Hart, anybody have questions for Britton? They already asked you a lot anyway. Uh, Arnold Adams, oh, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, for for Britt, but in the second, you know, in the second third round, what what was kind of talked about in that corner? Because I felt like you came out a lot more aggressive in the third round. No oh, guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I gotta give a big shout out to you know my husband Joey and my coach Jason and my whole team behind me. But I just remember seeing their faces and saying, hey, you know, you gotta get in there. Let's go. You got it. She doesn't want any, you know, just reassuring and being super positive. I think they could see that I was a little disappointed. So they were really good about changing my mental state and like, hey, you know, you just got to act on it and not hesitate because I think a lot of the times, you know, I just really want to be perfect and I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform that way. And they, you know, they saw that in me and, and just killed that whole, hey, go do what you do. And that's why you guys saw you know, me turn up and, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a brawler and I can really swing and I just need to go in there and do it, so. Um, any questions for Arnold? Arnold, congratulations on the win. I'm curious your thoughts, first of all, on the post-fight stuff, but before that, you, there was a lot of talk about you being emotional, how, how much this fight meant to you. Can you talk about that and what was going through your mind in the preparation for this fight? <coughs> uh... 
I don't know. It's just been a long road trying to get back to the belts. You know, I, it's, the promotion's been around three years now. I fought for the first year consistently, and then I sat for almost two years. And now that I'm back, I got to roll. I got to climb this mountain. So I'm here to put the work in. That's not an issue for me. But there was a lot of press following this because he was from the, the UK and he was the best over there. And I don't know, it just had my emotions extremely high and my energy levels was high and I was really focused and locked in on, on making sure I got the job done for this. The stuff outside the ring, I want to say it was the second round. I hear this guy, he's boo, get these bums out of here, yada, yada, yada. I hear it while we're in the ring fighting. I took a mental note, okay, cool. Finish him in the third round and he's over there again woofing. So all right, cool, since you want to interrupt me, now I'm going to address you and give you some spotlights. This is what you want. So I did it. Do you know who he is? <laughs> no, hell no, no. Mm, I just I just heard him. He was loud enough for me to hear him, and he wanted to be he wanted to be seen for a reason. Maybe he'll get signed and he'll get an opportunity. Uh, I doubt it. I'll be his first fight. Just like the Irish man Kyle, he got to coming at me on Instagram, and got rolled tonight. Within I think thirty seconds was it? How quickly did it go? I mean, he was running around the ring and then fell, hit the ropes, all type of goofy shit. How you a fighter calling me out and you look like Bozo the Clown out here trying to fight? Cardi, right? The, the what? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Any other questions for Arnold? Uh, all right, let's uh, raise your Ostovich. Rachel, congratulations on the win. Just early on, you cracked Paige with a, with a big shot early on. Was that part of your, your game plan to establish power and establish some dominance right away? Yup. <laughs> yup. I, I wanted to get that respect real quick. I want to let her know that I ain't playing around. You're going to feel my power. You ain't going to just come in here and boss me around. I don't care if it's my first fight. Here. And then we, we sort of talked about we, we talked about whether it was proving yourself right or proving other people wrong. Mm -hmm. I think there was a part of you kind of seeing it in your demeanor tonight that, although it's not the most important thing, I felt like you wanted to prove people wrong too. We saw the betting lines, we talked about that. How much of a weight was lifted off your shoulders tonight and how good did it feel to, to quiet a lot of people in the process? You know, it's pretty crazy knowing that, knowing I knew I was good, I knew what I possessed all these years, but it just couldn't translate into my fights. And for it to finally come on, you know, on the winning side, it feels good. It feels real good. So. Any other questions for <laughs> Rachel? Awesome, she said. <laughs> Susan. Hey, thanks for taking the time to speak to me. A great fight by all the fighters tonight. Congratulations. Rachel, what do you feel worked for you in this fight tonight? My overhand, right? <laughs> um, yeah, pressing the fight, establishing dominance, and just having a strong mindset and knowing that this is my fight. I'm winning this. I told myself, this is mine. I was even telling her, I was like, yeah, like she would catch me up, like, nice, but this is my fight. I was talking to her, letting her know. And that's just what it is. Something you just got to believe in yourself when nobody else does. Were you saying this inside the fight? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody have questions for myself? David, I think. What, what were your thoughts? First of all, what, what were your thoughts on the main event tonight? I thought, I thought Rachel looked great. I thought it was, it, the fight delivered. It was, just, it was a really good competitive scrap. What were your thoughts on the fight overall? I, I agree 100%. It was very competitive. Um, I'm not going to lie. I was unsure of what Rachel was going to bring in here. Um, you know, I, I don't know her that well, and you just watch social media, so is she training, is she not training? She trained her ass off, she came in here, she wanted the victory, she bit down, and she, and she delivered. So, you know, I was very impressed with the main event. So I gotta ask you what happened after the blue face fight. What was, I mean, you were right in the middle of that whole thing. Can you, can you talk about what happened from your perspective? Yeah, um, you know, this fan just came up and tried to start a fight with blue face. He said, you know, I want to fight you. And I just said, yo, my man, leave. And he just wouldn't leave, so we just made him leave. <laughs> uh, 
Once again, Chris from Cape Chicago, Chris Trudeau. And Dave, um, we had a couple of guys uh, take some uh, damage tonight. Zion Tomlinson went to the hospital. Um, I got an update from his father. He's having surgery tomorrow. They're putting a metal plate in his face. Um, Who? Zion Tomlinson. Um, they're going to have to put a metal plate in his face because he got cracked. Um, so, well, actually, any, a, actually, I got word that, that, they, that they don't need that surgery. Okay, well, that's cool because I just got that a few minutes ago. But anyway, also, um, fight of the night, um, fight of the night, knock on the night. What do you got for us, Dave? Um, I, you know, got to go back and look at it. Like, we, all, we always go back with the team. I mean, you know. Um, okay, yeah, whatever. That's cool. You know, I'll, get, I'll have an answer for you on Monday. There was a couple really good knockouts, a couple great performances. You know, I already gave a couple guys some money as they were leaving the ring, you know. Um, I told him I was going to do it this time, I and I did. I, I said, I said, you're not going to pay your I, step I said your I already get. I said I already gave a couple guys money. You girls are getting paid. You girls are getting. You girls are getting paid. Hey, boss. Beck Rollins is rumored to come back in October, November. Three fight winning streak. Britain's on a three fight winning streak. Split the shizzin. Why don't yeah, they fight for what? the title? You know what I want to do? I just want to. I just want to put something together. I want to crown a women's champion. So it's going to take a small tournament. We're not going to do an eight-person tournament. We're going to pick out the the four that we think that should be in this tournament, and we're going to crown a, a women's champion. That's what we're going to do. That's what I want to do. The women deserve it, so we're going to give it to them. Is Christina Ferrer going to be in this tournament? You're not allowed to ask questions. Yes, yes. She's fighting September 17th. Next. Any other questions? Yeah, right here. Britton, considering that you beat Paige in the, your last fight and then Rachel just beat Paige, would you guys consider a, a fight in general? Yeah, I mean, I have never turned down an opponent. Um, and Bossman can tell you that. And he actually texted me and said, hey, Britt, can you fight November 13th, X blah, 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 amount of money? I don't even ask who the opponent is. I say yes. So that's in the story. I say yes. I don't run from nobody. I don't hide from nobody. The only thing I'm saying is that Taylor Starling and me go way back. We are friends. And that if I am going to fight someone I'm that close with, it does have to be for a lot of money or a belt. And that's the only person I'm saying, unless Taylor wanted to go down some dark, awful Good path job, on disrespecting me, which I don't think she's going to do. We are going to be on that level. Other than that, there is not anybody I am scared of in BKFC. Yeah. And it, two more questions, guys. Two more. David, Go, Danny. Can, can you talk about the importance of these last like four or five weeks that have been, from the, that have been from the, for the promotion? BKFC 18, amazing event. Now BKFC 19, also a great night of fights. Can you talk about the, the two events back to back and the momentum that the promotions bring? Yeah, I mean, we just we just want to put on the best fights that we can. We want to, you know, get a lot of people to know about us. And by putting on these great cards back to back and delivering two crowds, uh, four thousand apiece, you know, it was it was it's been a great uh, four and a half week spread for us right now, and we're very very happy with where we are, and we know where we're going, and you know, we couldn't be happier with the promotion right now. And for Britain. Uh, you got married. Now you got a, a, a W. I mean, best week of your life. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm Knuckle Mania was amazing. I tell Joey that all the time. It was. I had all the pieces there. I had an amazing coach. I had an amazing camp. I had a lot to prove, and I I, I didn't think anything would top that. But having him as my coach and and being married to him is times 10 on what knuckle mania could be so we came out and we did what we needed to do and i couldn't be happier and now we're so excited to go on our honeymoon together and and just keep at, the, at this journey so we're gonna be we're gonna be the belt holders and uh you know no matter what so that's what we're that's what we're aiming to do all right one more question guys one more question mr boomaye are you gonna ask rachel out <laughs> What the hell? Next question. Next question. Come on. Next question. Go ahead. You got to fly Dave, home. Next great question, show. Bro. Congratulations to everybody. Susan Singori, Bare Knuckle News. How impressed were you with those TikTokers, YouTubers, the social media platform guys? I think they did a great job. Look, I mean, they came out and they fought, you know, but this is Bare Knuckle fighting and that's what it's going to stay. 
But I mean, they came out, they fought. These are guys, guys and girls that put themselves, you know, on a platform in front of a lot of people and risked a lot. And they came out there and they fought their asses off too. So, you know, everybody tonight really fought their asses off. So I'm happy with, I'm happy with the whole night. So any thoughts about having them back again or continuing the social media platform? I mean, if it is, it's, it's way down the road. Right now, we just want to build, build up the fastest growing, most exciting combat sport on the planet right now and just keep that going. I don't know because someone stepped on it and I want to find the person that stepped on my action figure and broke that shit tonight. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much, uh, BKFC 19. Thank you. <laughs>